This video covers using data bound to DOM elements. The structure of this video is as follows. D3 data operator revisited. D3 text operator. Using JavaScript functions inside D3 operators. Variables available inside D3 operators. And the summary. All right, let's get started. D3 data operator revisited. This is the D3 data operator. We have seen it before when we gave it values to bind to the selection. The data operator joins the specified array of data with the current selection. What we did not cover was what happened if you call the data operator without any values inside. When the data operator is called without any values, it returns the data property for each element in the selection, in the same order that the elements in the selection are currently in. Let's try it to see how it works. We start with a bare bones HTML file. Let's attach a number to a paragraph element. This command should make sense to you now. We select the body, we select the paragraph element, we bind data to the paragraph element, we use the update selection to select the enter selection, then we append the paragraph element so that it inherits the data property from the placeholder element. And by doing this, we have bound data to the paragraph element. When we look at P data, we can see that the number one was attached to the data property. Now, let's call the D3 data operator without any values on the P data variable. You can see that this command returned the number one and an array. D3 provides an easy way to get data out of the element or elements which contain the data property. Let's see what happens if we attach several numbers to several paragraph elements. This command should make sense to you as well. We create five paragraph elements based on our array of five data points. Now, let's look at many P data. We can see that our data was attached to the data property of each paragraph element. Now, let's call the D3 data operator without any values on the many P data variable. You can see that this command returned the number attached to the selections paragraph elements in an array. Finally, let's select the first paragraph in the HTML document. Because we use the select operator, we are grabbing the first paragraph element in the document. You can see that this returns an array that contains the number 9 which is the data element from the first paragraph element in the document. Next, we look at the D3 text operator. D3 text operator. This is the D3 text operator. If a value is specified, then it sets the text content of all the selected elements to the specified value. If the value is constant, then all the elements are given the same text content. If the value is a function, then the function is evaluated for each element in order. We come back to passing functions to the text operator in the next section. For now, let's look what happens when the value is constant. Let's start with a single paragraph element, which is given a data value. This inserts a paragraph into the HTML document that has a data property of one. Now, Let's use the D3 text operator to give this paragraph some text. We give it a constant value, the text string of paragraph power. As you can see, D3 attached the paragraph power text to the paragraph element in the selection. Again, for the D3 text operator, if the value is constant, then all of the elements in the selection are given the same text content. If we look at the P data variable and click into the arrays, you can see that the D3 text operator set the text content property 
of that paragraph element for us. Let's reload the page and see what happens if we have more than one data point. Next, let's use the D3 text operator to give the paragraphs some text. And with that, you can see that each of the five paragraphs now has the text paragraph power. As was mentioned before, for the D3 text operator, if the value is constant, then all of the elements in the selection are given the same text content. Let's look at the 5P data variable and click into the arrays. As you can see, the D3 text operator set the text content property of the paragraph element for us, which is the same for all the elements. Next, we take a look at using JavaScript functions and D3 operators. Using JavaScript functions and D3 operators. This is the D3 text operator. If a value is specified, then it sets the text content of all selected elements to the specified value. In the previous section, we saw that if the value is constant, then all the elements are given the same text content. However, if the value is a function, then the function is evaluated for each element in order. In the JavaScript functions video, we covered how you can pass a function to another function. This is exactly what is happening here. We are going to pass a function to the D3 text operator, which itself is a function. The D3 text operator then applies the function that we pass to each element in the selection. The D3 text operator then applies the function that we passed to each element in the selection. The function's return value is then used to set each element's inner HTML content. Let's try some simple examples to see how it works. Let's start with the earlier five paragraph element example. This inserts five paragraphs into the HTML document where each one has a data property. Next, let's define a simple function that returns the string function power. This function when called returns the string function power. Now, Let's try passing the my function into the D3 text operator. As you can see, the my function function was applied to each of the five paragraph elements. For each paragraph element, the function's return value was used to set each element's inner HTML content. Since the return value of our function was the string function power, each paragraph element got the string function power. Let's reload the page and get the five paragraph element example loaded again. This inserts five paragraphs into the HTML document where each one has a data property. As we covered in the JavaScript function video, we can also pass anonymous functions into other functions as arguments. So instead of defining my function and then passing it into the D3 text operator, Let's try to do it with an anonymous function. It works exactly the same way as when we passed in a named function into the D3 text operator. The function's return value is used to set each element's inner HTML content. So now we are using JavaScript functions within the text operator. Since we are passing a function into the D3 text operator, does D3 tell us anything about the elements in the selection? Variables available inside D3 operators. When you pass a function to a D3 operator, the D3 operator applies the function that was passed to each element in the selection. It turns out that the D3 operator also gives you three different variables to play with when you pass it a function. The three variables that D3 operator give us are D, I, and this. The D is the data property of the element currently being evaluated. The I is the current index of the element being evaluated. Note, 
because b3 uses arrays, this index is zero based, and this, which is the this context of the current DOM element. For now, we focus on the D and I and leave the this for later. What this means is that when we pass a function to the D3 operator, we can assume that the D variable and the I variable will be passed as arguments to the function we pass in, which means that we can use these D and I variables inside of the function. Let's try some simple examples to see how it works. We start with the earlier five paragraph element example. Next, let's define a simple function that takes in two arguments and returns a string telling us what those arguments were. This function, one called with two arguments, then returns a string. As you can see, the function took in two arguments and then returned the string telling us what those arguments were. Now, let's try passing the my function into the d3 text operator. As you can see, the my function function was applied to each of the five paragraph elements. For each paragraph element, the function's return value was used to set each element's inner HTML content. Since the return value of our function was a string telling us the two arguments passed to it, we can see the data attribute for each paragraph element, as well as the index for each paragraph element within the D3 selection. Let's reload the page and get the five paragraph element example loaded again. This time, let's try it with an anonymous function. So instead of defining my function and then passing it into the D3 text operator, let's try to do it with an anonymous function. It worked exactly the same way as when we passed in a name function into the D3 text operator. The function's return value is used to set each element's inner HTML content. And because we know the D3 operator gives us the D and I variables to play with, we know that we can write an anonymous function that takes in these two values, which means that we can write the code inside of the anonymous function to use these two values. And with that, you can see how we can use the data bound to DOM elements with D3. The summary. This video covered the D3 data operator revisited, D3 text operator, using JavaScript functions in D3 operators, variables inside D3 operators, and the summary.